Hello and welcome to St. Chad's. We have come together online but in our Father's presence to offer him through our Lord Jesus Christ praise and thanksgiving, to hear his most holy word, to pray for others as well as ourselves, and to ask forgiveness for our sins. Let us then confess our sins to Almighty God and pray together. We've all fallen short of the standards God has set for us. Therefore, come, let us return to the Lord and say, Lord our God, in our sin we've avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment. Bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to purify us from all unrighteousness.
first reading this morning is from Psalm 63, verses 1 to 9. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you, your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. This is the word of the Lord. Let us confess our faith in the words of the creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, who was conceived of the, by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Oh, 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 oh,
Good morning. Our second reading today is from John chapter 9, verses 1 to 12. Jesus heals a man born blind. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned here, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed on him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Night is coming when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, made some mud with his saliva and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told them, wash in the pool of Siloam. So the man went and washed. He came home seeing. His neighbours and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that he was. And others said, no, he only looks like him. But he insisted himself, I am that man. How when your eyes were opened? They asked. He replied, the man called Jesus, made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Well, where is this man? they asked him. I don't know, he said. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our message is taken from uh, John chapter 9 and verses 1 uh, through to 12. Jesus heals a man born blind. It's easy just to look at the miracle and be amazed. But it's here to teach us what we need to hear from God's word. First thing, I want to say, first thing I want us to see is that God has a, pr a purpose for all our suffering. As we look at the world today, and particularly as we look at Ukraine and the, uh, what's going on there, it's difficult to understand that God has a purpose even in that. But God does have a purpose for each and every one of us. And God has a purpose even in our suffering. <laughs> Listen to verses 1 to 3 again. As he went along, he saw a man blind from birth. The disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus replied, neither this man nor his parents sinned. But this, is, this has happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must be doing the works of him, <coughs> him who sent me. To, the night is coming when no one can work while I am in the world. I am the light of the world. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. God has a purpose. The disciples didn't recognise that God had a purpose in suffering. They thought that because this man was born blind, either he or his parents had, had sinned. The interesting thing here is that uh, they considered that the uh, baby that was born blind, the man who, or the man who was born blind, 
must have sinned. How could a baby be born, uh, be a sinner in the womb? The reality is that we're all sinners. Not one of us is perfect. We're born with sin in us. It's passed on from our forefather right back in the Garden of Eden when man decided to follow their own way and <laughs> not God's way. But it couldn't be, uh, it couldn't be that, that, that that's, that's the reason for our suffering. It isn't the fact that we're, the fact that we're suffering isn't because of any wrong that we're done. God's not punishing us because of our deeds. No. God says that the purpose for this man's suffering was to bring glory to God. The purpose for our suffering today, <coughs> the purpose for the suffering in Ukraine and in many other parts of the world, is for the glory of God. It is to bring people to the point where they cry out to God. It's interesting that the Christian religion is getting more, more publicity on national television today and every day at the moment because of the faith of people in Ukraine. <coughs> we know not why God's allowed this to happen, but God is still in control and he has a purpose in our suffering. <laughs> Secondly then, God has a plan. Did you notice the plan of God? A man born blind. We don't know how old this man was, but he was born blind. He was old enough to sit and to beg. He was old enough to, be, uh, to, to speak on his own behalf. But God has a plan. His plan was that one day Jesus would come along and heal him. And that that would bring glory to the Father. And God has a plan for your life and for mine. And no matter where we go, if we belong to him, no matter what we are doing, no matter how we suffer, then God's plan is still real. There are many uh, examples of such a thing. Johnny Erickson is just one. Johnny Erickson, should I say, is just one. Johnny Erickson, at the age of 21, I believe, had a diving accident and became a, para a paraplegic. But with her faith strong, she, she was sat in a wheelchair. And although she was in a wheelchair, she brought praise and glory to God. She's written books. She's spoken and preached the word of God to thousands, millions of people who would never have heard it spoken by her had she not had the accent god has a plan a plan for the man then but a plan for us today and what does god want from your life and from mine god wants a proclamation they took the man and they asked him how he was how he was healed and he told them how it happened Verse 11, he replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to the Siloam and wash, so I went and washed and I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I don't know, he said. A proclamation, a proclamation that Jesus has the power to heal. Amen. As our Saviour has taught us, let us pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. The collect for this week is as follows. Eternal God, 
give insight to discern your will for us and give up what harms us and seek the holiness you desire in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us bring before the Lord our prayers of intercession. We thank you, Father God Almighty, that you have chosen to reveal yourself to us in Christ Jesus and through the testimony of his perfect life. We pray that we would 
Know your blessing through reading, hearing and taking your written word to heart. Through, your, uh, through Jesus Christ, the word made flesh. Amen. We thank you that you are the great I am, the creator and sustainer of all things, separate and unconquerable, unco yet mystically present. We pray that we would accept Jesus Christ as he is both Lord and Saviour. We pray for those who serve you at home and abroad, that his faithful witness would be found in us and in them. Amen. We bring to before you those that we know that do not at this time know you. We pray, Lord, that you reveal yourself, that they may find the way of salvation through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you, God, uh, God, for the vision of Jesus Christ, risen and glorified, given to us in your holy word, the Bible, so that we may persevere, overcome and conquer. We pray for those who at this time are going through trials and hardships of various kinds. May they and we recognise that we are more, <coughs> more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. We pray that we would keep our eyes fixed on him in whatever circumstances we face, remembering that he is the author and perfecter of our faith. Amen. We thank you, Lord, for those who are prepared to work hard, test false prophets and face hardships for the Lord. We pray for them that they, may, they would keep their eyes fixed on the eternal promise of salvation and life with you in glory. So that the battles they face in this life would lose, uh, so as they face battles in this life, they would not lose their first love. We pray for our nation, for our queen and for her family and for, <clears throat> and for our government and opposition. Father, we pray, heal our nation. Amen. And Father, we bring again before you the terrible situation and, and events that are taking place in Ukraine. We pray, Lord, that you bring peace to that nation. Take away the anger and the hurt and uh, restore uh, a time of peace uh, that the nation may be rebuilt in Jesus' name. Amen. Do it. 
let's close our service with the words of the grace the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with us all evermore amen go in peace to love and to serve the lord in the name of christ amen